Are you trying to figure out how to get things done? Are you trying to look for knowledge that can actually help you do something, be something, be better at what you do? Hi, I'm Joyce Mbaya, founder of ZD, where we provide affordable online courses for Africa. This is the place for you, the ZD Podcast, where we have inspiring conversations with amazing people. And the ultimate goal is to help you know more so you can do more. Morning, audience, esteemed audience, to the No More Do More podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Kabingu. And today I'm joined by a very prestigious person. One of the few people I think I've interviewed who has an, a, an extremely extensive resume. I was going through it. Um, you know, most of the time when you're on LinkedIn, you usually don't have to scroll someone's um, like accomplishments and achievements. Yours was just scrolling, I was just scrolling. <laughs> and it was <laughs> yeah, all these amazing things you've done. So maybe I'll I'll just do a brief introduction. You can add more uh, on this. So uh, so our, our guest today is called Dr. Carol Chakua. So Dr. Carol Chakua is a mom, a psychotherapist, and a parenting coach who is passionate about parenting, emotional wellness, and quality education. Dr. Carlo holds a PhD in medic, uh, medical education with a, with a specialization in co- counseling psychology, a master's degree in counseling psychology and a bachelor's degree in education. She is a certified psychologist as well as a certified trainer of trainers in skillful parenting. She has worked in numerous educational and mental health institutions, both in Kenya and in the USA for over 15 years. So, Dr. Chakua, is that true or is there something I've left out? I know I've left out a lot. <laughs> I think I shared I shared uh, that quite a, a while ago. Nowadays, I share a shorter version of that. So, <laughs> you have actually said more than I would have shared. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but thank you, Kevin. It's very nice to be here today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, let's uh, just get into the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so apart from all this, uh, can you tell us um, a bit about who Dr. Chakua is and how you actually said, I want to get into therapy, counseling and all okay. this stuff? All right. Okay. So first, I, 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 we, let's, go, let's go by Dr. Carol because that's okay. the name of this, um, on all my uh-huh. platforms. Uh, okay. So uh-huh. um, I am a mom. I have a son who is 13 years now, but I have also taken care of my nieces and nephews and I'm always taking care of them. So I I, I have so many children in my space. And uh, before I had children, there's, I was still a psychologist, I was still a therapist, but there's a way I viewed parenting that changed very much when I started uh, interacting with my nieces and nephews and eventually had my own child. And so um, I was working with children even before I had kids. And it was um, a very fulfilling experience because uh, I, I was able, you know how children are, children are very easy to influence. They are malleable, they are open to experiences. And so uh, it was easy to work with them. You know, they would come in with whatever issues they were experiencing. Mostly they were behavioral issues, you know, or trouble, getting trouble in school, not doing well, getting trouble at home, you know. And so parents would send them to me and they're like, you know, talk, talk, talk to her, talk to her. Mostly that's what happens when parents send children for therapy. So, you know, I would use my skills because I'm trained and it would work very well because, like I said, children are easy to influence. But then over time, I realized, you know what, something wasn't right because they would still be brought back after a couple of months with the same, same issues. And the reality, Kevin, is that children respond to a certain environment. And so they were going back to the same, same environment, you know, that initially brought them into therapy. And so I, 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 I felt like I wasn't being effective. And one of the things I've realized is that many children who are sent to therapy really don't need to be there. What really needs to happen is the parents 
need to be equipped with uh, knowledge, with skills, with tools, with strategies on what kind of environment children need to thrive. And so that transitioned my practice. And so I stopped, actually completely stopped working with kids. And I went back into reading research on parenting skills and how to just help parents. And so that's how my, my practice shifted. Um, currently, uh, I am actually going back. So for the last five years, I have been working as a parent coach. But from the beginning of this year, I've realized that, again, there is something called system. So if you cannot just influence one side and leave the other side. So right now, I'm actually developing programs for both parents and children combined together. And I'm going to launch that at the end of this year, a combined program. But basically, that's how my journey started, working with children first and then transitioning to working with parents because I realized that um, if I influence one parent, they go and influence three other children. And of course, there are some who need to go for therapy, but not everyone who comes to therapy as a child really does need that. So that's what I've been doing for the last five years and I'm venturing into now working with both uh, from the beginning of this year. Okay. So uh, audience, you've had that an exclusive on the ZD podcast. <laughs> I don't know if she's shared that with, uh, anywhere else, but yeah, uh, here she's dropping a new program. You, I saw somewhere you'd written that 90% of parents are not really equipped um, to handle like uh, raising kids uh, and all this stuff, that relationship with understanding how kids uh, uh, need to be developed. So what are these misconceptions that um, these parents um, have? Yeah, actually, it's not even like 90%. Really, I don't think there's anyone who is equipped because no one is born knowing how to be a parent. But this what comes naturally to us. So it's not like we are all at zero. It's just that we are raising our children in very different times now, and we need to be aware of that. Uh, The things that we thought worked or uh, we, we can say worked for our parents may not work very well in the, in the, in the present uh, world that we are raising our children. So I would say basically that it's, I, I can't even put a percentage. I, I don't know. I think what I said in that percentage is that 90% of the clients I see have a parenting-related oh, okay. concern. So whether they are parents or 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 not it's a parenting related concern so some of them will come because they're having issues with their children but also some even if they don't have a children somehow we will still it will still go back to how they were raised so it's a 90 percent at parenting related concerns whether or not their parents and so we need to um then really you know that's really one of my motivations i want to be able to equip parents so that less and less children come for therapy but also less and less adults when they go for therapy it's not a parenting related concern it will just be you know something like um, maybe a mental health issue that has very little to do with how they were parented because you know mental health like mental health disorders are illnesses like any other and sometimes it's not as a result of parenting so i hope that uh, clarifies uh, the 90 percent part but back to the misconceptions um i think that uh like i said we are raising our children in very different times and we need to wake up to that reality and the reality that uh, we need skills, just like we need skills for work. We are always improving ourselves in different spaces. Uh, but rarely do we allow ourselves to um, look for support when it comes to parenting. I see parents struggle with so many other things before they finally 
decide, oh, maybe I need support in this area. And so I think one of the misconceptions is that I can hack it because after all, uh, my parents didn't attend a, a, a parenting class, you know. Uh, but when you look at how we are raising our children, it's, you know, one less community focus. Therefore, you know, we don't have that mentality of it takes a village to raise a child anymore. And that yeah. means that... Um, when we don't have a community focus, then the support systems are off. And when we are very individualistic, it actually impacts on our mental health. Uh, uh, connection and community is a source of mental, uh, of, of mental wellness for us. And so when we lack that, then we, we, we don't have support, then it increases uh, the chances that mental health issues, uh, mental health disorders or mental health uh, problems might occur. So that's one. And then, of course, you know, technology. Uh, our children have access to, to 100 million teachers at the click of a button. So yeah. they are fighting with the voice of of parents so there's all these 100 million voices then there's a the voice of the parent and yeah. so if you are busy because you have to go out there and put food on the table and take your child to a good school then that means that really it's not your voice that counts as much as the other voices that are so access accessible they're at the tip of your fingers so yeah. we need to realize that um that the skills the, the information is out there uh, sometimes it's too much even for parenting, but um, guidance, guidance is what we need, some direction and support. So there are many, many uh, things. I don't know if uh, I've answered everything. You had mentioned something like um, diagnosing a lot of Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen a lot that. of like ADHD and stuff like that. Yeah, young kids being given Ritalin to calm them down and stuff like that. Mm. It's something I've been noticing that's happened. It has started to happen frequently because the the parents think they can't concentrate in class, they can't stay still, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh gosh, Kevin, that's just could take a whole other podcast <laughs> to talk about <laughs> that because yeah. again, we can't uh, minimize the fact that there is a high, there is an increase in mental health illnesses. Not just ADHD, but anxiety, depression, bipolar. They, as there's an increase in uh, diagnosis of that. One because there is um, more information and people are getting treated. The thing is, many people went with undiagnosed mental health illnesses. Uh, yeah. Kitambo, you know, way back, and even now, <laughs> I, I, yes, I was yes. watching someone who said that. And, and, and this is not to, to jab at anyone, but many leaders, we, we are being led by leaders who have undiagnosed mental health issues. Mm. You know, we have people around us, our relatives, our, 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 peop, our, our cousins and, and all that who have undiagnosed mental health illnesses. So we, we, we cannot um, minimize the fact that they do exist. But yeah. on the other hand, also... Um, our children are highly, are highly triggered, are easily triggered because they're highly, they're overstimulated. That's the word. They're overstimulated because of gadgets, because of technology, but also because of the changes that are going on very fast in the world. The technological advance, advancements are very high. Therefore, it's hard to draw a line to say, is this really ADHD? Or is yeah. this too much time spent on the screen? You know, it's very hard to, to, to draw that line. Uh, our children are also highly stressed. The expectations on our children at school are more than uh, than where when we grew up. I don't know how old you are, Kevin, but when we were growing up, we 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 played more. We we had less. We carried less books. We had less subjects. You know, yeah. Yeah. We interacted with nature more. So because of all those things, then the the the, the chances that our children are exposed to. Um, to, to to mental illnesses or mental health problems more than than us. So, like I said, that could just be a whole other podcast because yeah, um, yeah. there are reasons why 
the diagnosis, for example, for ADHD have gone high. And many of those reasons are valid. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can see that the, the whole um, thing about when we needed the community the most is when the community like was pushed to the side. Mm-hmm. Like I think, like you said, that part of uh, a lot of voices around our kids are what are influencing them. In the past, mm-hmm. it was always because we're in the same clan, the same family. A lot of mm-hmm. the voices were more or less in line with how our family works, how um, yeah. things are supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I can see the whole confusion kids can get. Uh, just to, today, mom is telling me this thing. Someone else outside is telling me something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I can see they're very confused. Mm-hmm. And so I think maybe this um, is a question on so how as a, a parent um, with all this noise, as you put it, mm-hmm. how can how can I be able to like, um, I know I can't spend as much time with my kid as I would have wanted to. So how do I like put in, I, I can say systems in which I ensure that um, they're, they're reaching their milestones or I, there's something I, I read about um, if a kid doesn't know how to be social sociable with other kids by the time they're around two, it's usually a hard uh, like uh, skill to learn as they grow up to be more social, to be able to deal with problem solving when they're, they're around other kids. So as mm-hmm. a parent, how do I ensure that I, I reach these miles? I, I ensure my kid reaches these milestones. Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And 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 again, there are so many misconceptions about parenting that just what you have just said being one of them. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> So there's this there's this concept called window of opportunity. You know, we okay. we always feel like if we don't uh, do stuff by a certain age, we've lost it. Mm. So so let me just even just simplify that very very uh, for you for just what you have said now, okay? And that's what I do. I really demystify a lot of things when it comes. So the brain does not mature they don't fully develop until age 25 and even now neuroscientists are saying it's still undergoing maturity even at age 32 mm-hmm. so there are some things sometimes we expect of children that they are not even that are not age appropriate for example developing social skills even now in my 40s i am developing my social skills, social skills. <laughs> yeah. yeah so what happens is that when we we, we fix children like that, then we become, we go into parenting with a lot of anxiety and we always want to cram everything because an article said this, or, you know, some expert said this. In fact, I don't really even call myself a parenting expert. I just call myself a, a parent coach uh, because I'm also learning so much. I cannot even say I'm an expert. In this so, um, so, you know, for, for a two year old, the part of the brain that is that is uh, fully mature is the part that is responsible for emotions and for reactions, and mm-hmm. therefore that's why you see the tantrum. You know, it's their way of communicating, and therefore w- w- our job as parents at two years is to provide a space for children, first of all, to express their emotions, to validate their emotions but also to teach them the emotional regulation or emotion regulation skills that they need, for example, to calm down. If you teach a child how to calm down at two, then you're teaching them the right social skills. But that doesn't mean that they will not uh, act out when they are teenagers. They will still act out because it's also a developmental process in teenage. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that. Uh, so you you asked many you ha- you asked a question, but I decided to, to address what you had said first. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we need to understand there's developmental milestones, and one of the things I do is really unpack that for parents so that they do not go into parenting with anxiety that, oh, I'll miss my window of opportunity. I actually don't believe there's a window of opportunity. People have different uh, beliefs when it comes to raising children. But for me, I believe it's about providing the right environment for children to learn skills. 
mm. skills of life, skills of uh, conflict re- re- resolution, skills of building character, okay? That we just need to provide the right environment. And if you're trying to force a child to, for example, name their emotions at two years, it's just uh, unfair to that child because yeah. they still do not have the emotional vocabulary. So um, then, you know, then you asked, you know, now we are busy. So, you know, how do we make sure that we we, we are providing the right um, environment for our children, given the times that we are living in? And my answer there for me, and that's what I do with parents, is I help parents work on themselves. We bring into parenting our own baggage, our own uh, past trauma, yeah. our own belief systems about parenting, about discipline, about respect. Um, uh, we went through certain things when we were young and unconsciously we swear. We don't even know we've done it. We swear and we say, my child will never go through this. Yeah. Then you go into parenting and you find yourself doing the very, very same things that you swore you would never do. You know, I will yeah. not shout at my children. I will, Don't you chapa. Know, I will not chapa. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah. some say I was chapwat, so let me chapa. I mean, chapa, it just, yeah. yeah. But what I do is to really help parents work on themselves. If there's anything that needs to be healed, I help you heal that. I encourage parents to parent more with more self-awareness so that they are not trying to finish, to complete what was not completed. There's one of my grounding quotes comes from a, a parenting coach and psychologist called Dr. Shefali. And she says that unless you are fulfilled, you will use your children to complete you. Mm. You will teach them how to live with your fears, your emptiness, and your past, all the yeah. while unaware you're doing so. So mm. it's that uh, an awareness that messes the environment in parenting. And therefore, I help parents to be more self-aware when they are parenting. When you're more self-aware, then you know that if you've been away from uh, your child for three days because you went for work, when you come back, you come back and you separate the guilt that you might be feeling for being away and just learn to be present. You say, the 10 minutes that I'm with this child, I'm going to be fully present. I'm going to listen. I'm going to connect with them. Okay? So it is possible to actually be a busy working parent and still be present for your child. So those are the things that I, I help parents do. I help them separate the guilt, the pain, whatever it is, so that when they're with their children, even if it's 10 minutes, you are there, you're fully present, and you're connecting with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. It's true. I think uh, a lot of times we never look at that uh, part of ourselves. Of we also have to work on ourselves before we impact things on our kids. It's like mm-hmm. in, in church, how I usually see uh, parents getting frustrated by a kid who can't sit through a two-hour church service. Yeah, and and I'm like this is just a kid to them. This is boring. They don't understand what's happening. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I can see all that. Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm actually happy that I'm getting to learn all this uh, <laughs> before I even have my own kids. Uh, yeah. Work out myself. Uh, yeah. Learn how to uh, yes be present with them. I think that's a, a big part because in in many cases uh, when I look back even to my childhood. Mm-hmm. The moments I usually appreciate with my parents or my parents is the moments they were the most present with me. So mm-hmm. those are uh, those moments we had very emotional that, that had high emotional like turnouts, like very happy. Mm-hmm. Not uh, not those um, things where parents go. Nilikulipia school fees. Nilikulipia like I, I I didn't care about those things when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just yeah yeah. So it's uh, yeah it's an interesting um, thing. And maybe with this I can also. I can also use this as a jump off point to transition to uh, the courses you have on ZD right now because all through what you've been saying, uh, I've seen that you've touched on a lot uh, of uh, uh, the things you talk about in your courses. Yeah, uh, listeners, she has two courses on the platform. There's uh, uh, Disciplining Your Child, that was the intro one, and um, there's Drama-Free Discipline. 
and uh, maybe Dr. Dr. Carol, you can take us through um, a bit on what en- essentially uh, these courses are for the parents listening or people who intend to be parents uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, what are they going to get from these two uh, courses? Right. I think that uh, there are two, and one is a free course. I don't know if it's uh, at, at a fee, but it's a free course. It's free. For it's free. It's five, free. five reasons. Five reasons why your discipline method is not working for you. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 basically, that just helps you to um, to begin to look at yourself. I, I mean. I, 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 I just talks about some of the things that uh, we think, number one, because we think we don't understand the real purpose for discipline, you know. Uh, when we think about discipline, is we, we think about chapa or time out or taking away privileges. We think about that one thing you need to do, you know. But discipline, when you look at the meaning of discipline, the root word for discipline is to learn. It means to learn. And therefore, discipline is really about providing an environment for learning. And so I just unpack that. I unpack um, how it is uh, important that we we um, be clear, we be consistent, we follow through with the consequences that we say that we follow through. So that one is a free one. And uh, I'm sure um, you, you, you can, uh, I mean, I think it's just on ZD. It's ZD.com, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll share even the links with the, the listeners. They can check it out. Right, right. And then the other one is uh, drama-free discipline. And it's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> discipline is one of my favorite topics because it is so seriously misunderstood, you know. And so that's one. I think it has a five-part series. I have yeah, done some. Yeah courses on discipline and that it's been a while since i have checked that course so uh sometimes yeah, i can i can read maybe i can read a few of the yeah, sure, parts sure. you covered uh yeah. the first one was was what have i believed mm-hmm. the second part was what is discipline mm. the third part was why do children misbehave mm. the fourth part was what is in my inner environment as a parent mm. and uh, the last one was best environment to create Ah, wonderful. That's, uh, you make, you've made it, you've broken it down very well. So yeah, I mean, yeah. those are the five, uh, to, to, you know, there's a lot of drama around discipline. And that's, I think, what I cover in the first, first section, because we have beliefs about discipline that are mistaken, you know. Uh, for example, because of how we grew up, discipline is equal to drama. You know, uh, when yeah. whenever there was discipline, there was crying, there was beating, there was shaming, there was embarrassing, uh, there was shouting, you know. And therefore, yeah. if that doesn't happen, then discipline, it's, we are not disciplined. In fact, we hear many people say, I've really disciplined my child today. Or yeah. this child lacks discipline. You know, it's because we think that it has to be combative, you know, and full of drama for it to work. Um, so, so, uh, so then, you know, then we transition now to the next thing, which is what really is discipline. And basically for me, um, which also comes from, the free one. The free one gives you a really good taste of what the actual paid course is. And that one is, this discipline is about learning. Discipline is a process. Discipline is about creating the right environment for lessons to learn. So that means then, Kevin, that sometimes you will not do anything. Okay? Yeah. Because yeah. is that the right environment to teach a lesson when you are very angry and the child is throwing a tantrum there is nothing that will be learned in fact most people say oh you know when your child is screaming at the supermarket for a sweet push push them to the, a corner with a muiko and chapa them for them to keep quiet so here is what will happen there they will stop crying but you haven't disciplined them because you haven't created an environment for them to learn how to calm down and ask for something what they have learned, you have actually disciplined them. Let me actually say that you've disciplined them in the sense that you have taught them that when um, you use violence, things move faster for you. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not here to say, to tell parents not to chaper their children. Actually, I give parents all the information that I feel they need is necessary to make a decision whether they should spank or not spank okay. their children. 
I'm not that kind of, and I know a lot of psychologists will tell you outright, do not spank. Not spank yeah. But I also come from that school of thought of we've come from very far. We have a certain history. And therefore, just telling a parent, stop punk- spanking without preparing them, without really also working, helping them work on themselves, then I'm not doing a justice to them. And here's yeah. the thing. Many of the parents that I work with in the long term stop using the chapa because they're so empowered they're so confident they're so they're so clear they have so many tools in their toolboxes and therefore they don't really find that as uh, an option but there are those who still do what i'm just saying is that they have so many tools in their toolbox that because most of the time we use the chapa because we don't know what else to do But when yeah. you have any options, you don't need it anymore. And therefore, uh, I, I, I tell parents, you know, it's a journey of learning how to provide the right environment yeah. for a lesson to be learned. Okay. And therefore, uh, discipline also have, has positive aspects of it. Encouragement is part of discipline, you know? Yeah. Uh, providing, teaching your children how to, your child how to make the bed is part yeah. of this. Just think about what happens in a school system because that's where learning occurs. There's rewards, there's reprimands, okay? Yes. So I help them unpack that in the second session. It's like I'm telling them the whole course here. <laughs> yeah. Then the third one is... It's even on that, it's, it's funny, there's uh, this uh, viral TikTok that was going around about when African parents congratulate you is when you're doing something bad. That one, uh, Yeah, you have broken it. Congratulations. Break everything. Yes, there's so much sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. And then when they give you instructions, it's like, I'm going, I'm I'm going, and when I come back, let me find those dishes on the sink. And yeah. they <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but mom, why should I put this on my head? Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we talk about why because we are always uh, wanting to fix behavior, and the reality, Kevin, is that from a psychological perspective, behavior is the tip of a, of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. When children behave, misbehave, they are communicating something. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I equip parents, and part of that is in the video, is to just help to uncover, to, to kufungwe your bonnet, you know, yeah. and check what is going on in the car, you know. It's mm-hmm. just open it, pop it up and begin to begin to be more investigative with the mm-hmm. children's behaviors so that they begin to understand what is the need underlying the misbehavior. Sometimes the need is a need for skills, a need for training, a need for attention, a need for belonging, a need for control. You know, all those are need, psychological needs. And so when par- as parents, we begin to meet the underlying needs, actually the behaviors reduce. Okay, yeah. they reduce. Yeah. And so that's what I talk about as, as, as that, the, the, the third part. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I think uh, the fourth one is creating an environment. Yeah, inner environment. Oh, what is my inner environment as a what parent? Is, yes, what is my inner environment? And that's what I talked about earlier when I was talking about self-awareness. What's going on with me? Mm. You know, what's going on with me? Uh, do I need to heal? Am I stressed as, at work? Okay, because yeah. we tend to project our stresses and our insecurities on our children. And so just inviting parents to be more self-aware there so that uh, they are not using their children to complete them. Okay, I have seen uh, spaces where you grow up in a lot of scarcity okay. and then you decide that you will provide everything for your children and everything in quotes because for you, because of that lack, you yeah. go out there and work. And yeah. when you get your children, you take them to the best schools and you give them pretty much everything that everything. you didn't have. And then they are still struggling and you get so perplexed. You're like, but I'm providing everything. You even said earlier, I'm paying for your fees. But you are so disconnected from them. And like you said, it's those moments of connection that you remember 
more than all these things. Because these children are born into all this opulence and therefore they don't know that there is anything like luck. So yeah. it's not like you're doing them a favor. Many parents think they're doing their children a favor by giving them all these things. These children don't know that there's something like a favor being done because they don't know how you grew up. It doesn't even matter how many stories you tell them. It just looks like fantasy stories, you know. <laughs> so, you know. But so what's my inner environment? Even as I'm providing all these things, am I also connecting with them? What is my belief about that space of scarcity? That providing everything for my child that I didn't have is what love is. And I see that more with dads, more than moms. Yes, yes. You know, they just take up that role of provider and they move with it. Okay. Yeah. And you know, mom is the one who is doing the nurturing and also the disciplining and all that. I mean, those dynamics are there. So, um, and so that just comes once to, to back orders. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not being stereotypical here because I work with parents. I, that's more of a tendency, but sometimes you also have the mom is the one who, you know, is providing and, and, and the dad is more the nurturing and the hug. I've seen in that as well I'm just talking of you know like what happens most of the time but either way what's your inner environment when you don't want to chopper your children is it because um i mean when you don't want to discipline let me talk about discipline when you don't want to uh, when you find yourself giving in to your children a lot is it because of something you missed and therefore you're trying to complete it in your children mm-hmm. yeah so that's what uh, the fourth part is Yes, yes. So what is the best environment? And that's pretty much just a summary of everything to just really yes. remember that the best environment is when you are showing up with self-awareness. And then um, I think I talk a little bit about consequences in, in that course, uh, in that uh, section, you know, uh, just what kind of consequences should I be giving? How can I show up um as a, 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 a nurturer, how can I show up also being both firm and kind? You know, one of the things parents ask me is, how can I be firm but kind? And I'm t- I tell them, remove the but and put and, you know, it's possible. Yeah both firm and kind and that really happens when you're continually working on yourself Mm. yeah 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 true well uh it's been very insightful uh i think um there's a lot for me to ruminate on uh think about and i hope uh, our audience both who have kids and who don't have kids have um have gotten something out of this Mm. Uh, the course is amazing, amazing. You'll get so many more tidbits. This is just like a, a tip of the iceberg. She goes into way more details in the in the course. Mm. So um, just if you get the chance, just get it, uh, even if for yourself or a parent, you know, um, it will be very helpful. And uh, Dr. Carol, so if um, our audience also wants to get in touch with you, is the, can you share like your details, how they can contact you? Yes, I'm on um, on all social media pages: FB, Facebook, Twitter, and um, and uh, what's that? IG. I'm not on TikTok yet, <laughs> 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 but I, I, I the pressure is real, Kevin. Yes, the pressure, the pressure is, is getting worse. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> also, because of the kind of uh, uh, parent that I attract, they are they are also on TikTok for oh, some reason. Yeah. And actually, it's across the board, you know, sort of I connect with a parent who is in their 40s, their 50s, and also a parent who is in their 20s. 20s yeah. So, uh, Dr. Carol Chakua. So, DRC, D, doctor is DR. So, Dr. Carol Chakua. At Dr. Carol Chakua on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. At uh, On our website, I'm drcarol.co.ke. And also, just quick contact, you can cram it. It's 0707 And I'll, I'll be sure, I'll, sure, I'll put all this in the description. So just check the description uh, mm. and you'll get all this info. And actually, remember, I didn't even ask you about being parenting. The, oh, oh the, the, yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. In <laughs> fact, uh, it has really evolved. Do you know, I did this course when in 2018, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Recorded. Yeah, it's been a while. So there's a lot, a lot more going on. Um, being parenting, I do now coaching villages. I've gone online. I never used to do online sessions, but now actually uh-huh. I'm purely online. Uh-huh. I work with parents as groups. Uh, so we do the being parenting program as a group of parents uh, or even as individuals. So I also do one-on-one coaching sessions online. Uh, I do free free talks to institutions like schools and parenting groups just so that they can get a sense of what I do. But I also do a lot of speaking engagements. I support teachers, uh, school counselors to just give them what it is they need to create the right environment. And then, of course, now, like I said, I have something coming up by the end of the year. I'm I'm launching a a wellness program for both parents and teachers. I mean, for both parents and children as as a system. Yeah. Yeah, Look out for more. On yeah. Our social media yeah, I wish you could see me. I'm just grinning. I'm just saying extensive resume. It just keeps growing. <laughs> it's just doing incredible, incredible things. Yeah? It's like if I don't talk to you for like two months, I'll find you have increased, uh, I mean, brought in more things. Uh, more things are- yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. nowadays I, I just go by Dr. Carol, uh, therapist, parenting coach. And by they also have a book. It's called yeah. it's, uh, Parenting with Your Heart in Mind. It's, it's, it's also a very, very good book to just invite you into that space of, of self-awareness. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot that I'm doing more now. So, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Caro, for giving us your time. Um, uh, talking to us, it's been it had it has been very insightful. Uh, for I know everyone who's listening has gained a lot, and uh, Asante Sana for coming on the podcast. And uh, I hope the next time we'll talk, we, we'll have even more info to share. So uh, Asante, <laughs> thank you, thanks, Kevin. I enjoyed this. Have a good day. This week's episode has come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like and share, comment, get involved. Let us know what you think, what you want to learn next, and join us next time.